Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Dean Mitchell. You are about to enter the smartest doctor in the room. Today, I'm flying solo. It's an important podcast because I'm discussing the recent headline news. A new form of epinephrine was approved by the FDA on August 9th for anaphylactic allergic reactions to foods, to insect stings, and to drugs. The product uh, is a nasal spray called Nephi. Kind of has a, a cute play on the combination of a nasal spray, I guess that's where the N comes from, and epinephrine with the Epi part. Kind of sounds like a furry child's doll, so we'll see if the name sticks. But this treatment has huge implications for the rapid reversal of dangerous allergic reactions, most commonly from foods. However, the biggest obstacle until now for this treatment has been fear. Fear of giving oneself an injection. Those of you who regularly listen to the podcast know I am a board-certified allergist immunologist who specializes in the treatment of food allergies. So I think I bring a level of credibility and experience to this discussion, and I'm going to give you all my different points of view if you hang on till the end. So let's discuss this new treatment and explore all the angles as we typically do in the smartest doctor in the room. Now, just about everyone has heard of an EpiPen. You've seen it on TV shows. You've heard you probably have a friend or their child that carries around an EpiPen because of those dangerous allergic reactions. But the EpiPen is essentially an auto injector. And it became the dominant one that we, we often hear about. There are other ones, but that's the one that's the go-to. It's been around for decades, and it does provide life-saving treatments for patients with dangerous allergic reactions, again, mainly to foods and to the, the bee and the wasp things. But there were other issues, and I think we have to address them. Of course, there's the needle phobia. Understandably, patients, especially children, were afraid to give themselves the auto injection. I don't think parents were too keen on it either, giving a shot, unless you were a medical professional. Let's face it, everybody hates shots. Then there are the, the horror stories. Now, again, as an allergist, and I, I heard from my colleagues, pediatricians, they would hear stories about parents chasing their children around the house to give them the EpiPen to save their child's life. Not a great scenario. The other one is the, the pray and wait stories where patients were so afraid to give themselves the auto injection, they would actually drive to the emergency room and sit in the parking lot, hoping that the reaction would subside and they wouldn't need to go in. And finally, there's the financial burden. It was well known in the news a few years ago that the cost of the EpiPen skyrocketed when Myelin Pharmaceuticals was kind of taking advantage and jacking up the price to over $600 for this drug that's been around for decades, making it unaffordable for the average patient. They eventually lowered the price under a lot of pressure to about $300, but again, with a shelf life of a year and a half, it's still quite expensive. And what's even more alarming, there was another auto injector called AvaQ, which was pretty sophisticated. It actually would would speak to you the instructions uh, in, in delivering the uh epinephrine injection. But what do you think the price on that one was? $5,000. Now, that, that's a ripoff. Okay. Well, as I mentioned in the introduction, the Nephi epinephrine treatment should really bring a smile to children and all the parents' faces. Why? It's a nasal spray, no needles. This form of epinephrine is delivered through a regular, simple nasal spray. The big question, though, is it too good to be true? Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, and let's make the comparisons between the Nephi versus the EpiPen. Again, the questions we have to ask ourselves, is the Nephi safe? Is it effective? How does it compare to the EpiPen? These are all legitimate questions that 
we have to uh, address and answer to make this a, a useful transition. But let's look at the big picture as well as the logic and the data of this new device. Now, for comparison, the nose, like the skin, is actually a very good area to de deliver what we as doctors call topical medicine. We're all used to using cortisone creams for rashes instead of getting a cortisone injection. And similarly, for a long time, many allergy nasal sprays like Flonase and Nasonex uh, are taking the place of many oral antihistamines because these topical sprays are very effective. And they're in fact the first line treatment for allergic rhinitis because they work so fast. And again, topical tend to have less side effects. The other thing we should look at in comparison and really regarding almost an emergency type of medicine, which is similar, is the medication Narcan. Now, if you're not familiar, Narcan has been used uh, in helping treat the uh, opioid overdoses that unfortunately has been in high proportions throughout the country. But until recent years, Narcan was only a, you know been able to be given as an injection now with the Narcan nasal spray, which works just as well as the injection, and obviously with a lot more ease, they've been recommending that anyone um, in a home where there's concern about opioid overdoses or usage, that they have this available, again, with the proper trading. So this is sort of a parallel. Narcan is, again, used in an emergency situation the same way the EpiPen, and now Effie, is going to be used in emergency situations. Now let's get to a really key point, safety. Now, the good news is that epinephrine, again, as an injectable form has been around for decades with no long-term side effects. However, we do always have to look at the short-term reactions from epinephrine and the key parameters that are typically followed uh, from, with giving this injection, which I do in my own office, is blood pressure and heart rate. The reason this is important because both of these are affected by epinephrine. It's a very powerful drug. And the main concerns that we have is that blood pressure or heart rate can become too elevated and in some cases cause an abnormal heart rhythm or unfortunately a heart attack or a stroke. And these are very rare and also obviously extremely rare in younger patients. It's more of a concern in an elderly patient, especially if they have some type of underlying heart condition. But let's go a little bit deeper and look at some of the FDA data. And in figure three on the FDA uh, release, uh, I looked at this pretty carefully, and they um, showed that Nephi did have a slightly higher rate of change in the baseline heart rate and blood pressure, roughly about 10 or 15% compared to the epinef EpiPen. So in all honesty, it's obviously higher than the EpiPen, which is going to make you want to shake and feel jittery, but it's not that much of a significant difference. And it's basically showing that the medicine is getting in there. Let's get to efficacy as well. Now, this is tricky, as I, you're going to see my nuance later on. Drug trials have to be conducted uh, with a certain ethics. And obviously, you're not allowed to induce dangerous allergic reactions in a, in a patients in studies just to see how this medication works. So this is a really important point. Nephi in the trials was not given to patients in the midst of an anaphylactic reaction, how it is going to be used. The 175 patients were allergic patients, but they were healthy and, uh, as I said, not in an, an, uh, an allergic emergency state. So what they, the researchers uh, in the trials studied instead was also the blood levels. And they compared the blood levels of Nephi to EpiPen. And if you look at figure four in the FDA news release, and we lo I looked at it really carefully, it showed the blood levels of Nephi compared to EpiPen over 60 minutes. And they were pretty much equal. And this is important because... Essentially, blood levels of epinephrine really do correlate with the effectiveness of the treatment. Let's get to one more aspect where I think Nephi is a clear winner, and it has to do with convenience, compliance, 
and training. Now, carrying around a small two-inch nasal spray that is more heat resistant than an auto injector seems to be a no-brainer. And of course, it's easier if you're having an allergic you know, reaction to squirt a nasal spray in your nose and much less embarrassing than having to drop your pants and inject the, uh, the EpiPen into your thigh. So I think this will bring up compliance big time. Let's go to a commercial break before I share my final thoughts on Nephi. Okay, we're back. And I'm going to share with you my hopefully expert opinion uh, on the Nephi. And I think that this time the FDA got this right. You're dealing with a medication that we know has no long-term side effects. And it's just essentially being repurposed in a different uh, vehicle to make it easier to use. So Nephi is a wonderful advance in treating dangerous anaphylactic reactions to foods and insect allergies. I strongly feel that it will be as effective as the current EpiPen, much easier to use, much easier to travel with, because as we all know, allergic reactions can and usually do happen anywhere and not exactly when we're expecting it. But one other point that I think is really important, my only concern, as I said, as the smartest doctor in the room, always giving so much thought to this, is that this new medication is not battle tested. What I mean is that, as I mentioned, you know, in the study for approval using healthy allergic individuals, not patients in the anaphylactic setting, we don't know with 100% certainty if it's going to always be effective. So, my final thoughts are, I do approve of using the Nephi as the first-line treatment for anaphylaxis. But I wouldn't be opposed to a patient, especially over the next year, having the EpiPen as a backup for now. Now, this may sound like I'm hedging my bet, but at the, my core, I'm a conservative, carefully thinking physician who appreciates innovation, but I respect a proven track record. And I always like to look at all of the options. That's what this podcast is all about. Now, once the Nephi is in pharmacies in September, I'll be making a video on the proper way to administer it and provide more details on when there may be some contraindications. I hope this makes all of you allergic patients and parents feel a lot better and that help is on the way. Please also see my videos on the use of sublingual algae drops and Zolair to ultimately treat dangerous food allergies and hopefully never have to use any of these devices. And please, if you found this podcast helpful, subscribe on your podcast app 